welcome to students to the second lecture of financial market and services and today we would be discussing about the functions of the financial market so in the last class we discussed the what is financial market how it is being bifurcated into two categories of capital market and money market and today we would be discussing the functions of the money market that how important the money market is for our economy so let us start with the functions of a money market so when a money market is being considered it is the well developed money market is very really important for a economy if you do not have a well developed money market then it would be a problem for the economy because people won't be able to trade in the institutions the banks the individuals they won't be able to trade in the second thing is uh historically money market has developed as a re result of industrial and commercial progress so day by day the industries are progressing uh, more money is coming into the market so institutions are dealing in it so you have institutions who deal with the money market and you when individuals are considered they can only deal in the capital market and this difference we have discussed in the last class that the participants are different in both the markets and the difference between both the markets participant is only of the individuals so in money market you only have the financial institutions that are dealing in so this is developing because more and more industries are coming in it also has an important role to play in the process of industrialization and economic development of a country so industries are developing more industries are coming industrialization is happening there was the new economic policy which was introduced in 1991 so everything is happening so because of which we need a well developed money market we need a proper regulation of it and who regulates the money market the regulatory of money market is rbi and for the capital market it is sebi now if i talk about the functions of a money market there are numerous functions of the money market but these are the seven most important functions of money market first provides fund obviously you are in a market of a money what will happen you would be able to get the funds from that money you would be able to deploy your extra funds right use of surplus funds if i have extra money where what can i do i can invest in this market i can give it to somebody i can help an institution in developing no need to borrow funds from the bank every time you don't have to go to bank in order to borrow the funds you can actually take it from any financial institution for a long term for a short term period of time so i told you that there are few bodies who only lends so you have lic uti and nabard so these are few people who are in the process of lending the money helps in monetary policy which is the important policy so you have two policies that there there are in the economy first is the fiscal policy and second is the monetary policy so it helps in the formulation of the monetary policy financial mobility mobility movement the finance can easily be moved from one place to another you don't have to go your money will go to other institute equilibrium between demand and supply of funds if the demands are higher and people are saving more the supply will increase if demands are lower if you want to go to the equilibrium price what is this equilibrium price we would be discussing all the things and seventh is the economizing the use of cash what is economizing economizing means whenever you are using it economically you know where to use your funds you know where you can earn the higher returns so these are the seven important functions of the money market which we would be discussing in details in the further slides so first is it helps in providing the funds so it provides short term funds to the public and private institution needing such financing from their working capital requirement so you have two types of capital you have a fixed capital and you have working capital fixed capital means anything which you need in an asset form which you need for a long term working capital is something which you need for day to day operations so when i need money for day to day operations obviously i'll go with the short term funds something for which i don't have to pay a longer rate of return so where what where which market i will go into i will go into a money market so this market helps me in getting the funds second 
It is done by discounting trade bills through commercial banks, discount houses, brokers and acceptance houses. So, you have different types of trade bills. What are the trade bills? Trade bills is a part of your bills of exchange. I told you what is bills of exchange? You have a drawer, drawer means anybody who is selling the goods and a drawee who is signing that I will make the payment. Now, these bills of exchange are of two types. First is the trade bill and second is your accommodating bill. Now, what are the trade bills? Trade bills are the bills which are being exchanged when you are doing the trade. Trade means selling and purchasing of things. So, in case of trade bills, what will happen? You can discount those. Discount those means whenever you are in need of money, you can go to the bank and show that bill and you can ask, give me this money and uh, so, suppose if the bill is of 100 rupees, you can go to the bank and say that the maturity is of 15th of November, but I need money earlier. So, what will happen? You can take the money before 15th of November, but at a lower price. So, if you are getting 95 rupees against 100 rupees, it means you have discounted the bill. Money market helps the development of commerce, industry and trade within and outside country. So, the country where you are in, it helps in the trade development, it helps in the exchanges. So, this helps in the development of the economy. Moving forward, use of surplus funds. I told you that if there is this institution A and there is this institution B. Now, what is happening? If institution A is having extra or surplus funds. What this institution will do? It will lend it to somebody else and what A will get? A will get this plus our interest on your surplus funds. So, it provides opportunity to, to banks and other institutions to use their surplus means extra money and they can get profit out of it and how can they get the profit out of it by earning the return by earning the interest on that money. These institutions not only include commercial banks and other financial institutions, but also non-financial bank corporations which are NFBC. So, you have NFBC or NBFCs. So, these are non-financial banking corporations and this are non-banking financial corporations. So, both are same. Any government who wants to sell it. So, the content is same that you are going and you have extra funds, you do not need to be a bank, you could be any NBFC. What is NBFC? NBFC is any authority, any institution which is not a banking institution but deals with the purpose of lending and borrowing the money. Next is the short term interest rates of the money market influence the long term interest rate of the capital market. Now, if on a micro level the interest rate is more, then at a macro level the interest rate will be more. So, whatever will be the interest rate in the money market that will actually influence the interest rate in the capital market. If suppose I am employing my funds in a mutual fund which is less than one year and I am getting 8 percent rate of return and on the contrary there is one mutual fund where the tenure is always more than 3 years. If the rate of return is 8 percent I will never apply in this mutual fund. So, it has to be 8 point say 2 percent anything higher than this. So, this money market helps in influencing the interest rate for the capital market. Now, no need to borrow funds from the banks. There are different different organizations who are lending money. So, why every time you would go to the bank in order to buy the funds? So, you can go to any LIC, you can go to NABAD, you can borrow it from the mutual funds, you have UTI who are lending the money. So, the existence of a developed money market removes the necessity of borrowing by the commercial banks from the central banks. Now, every time the commercial bank does not have to go to RBI and say, I am in need of money, please give me the money. No, they have different different options from where they can borrow. They have LIC, UTI, and ABAD, all these institutes who are ready to give them the money. So, why every time they would go to a parent, they would go to their father or a mother in order to ask the money when the friends are there. 
to help them for a day for 15 days for 28 days obviously you would go to your friends in order to ask for the money if the former former means the commercial banks finds their reserve short of cash i told you they have to prepare two sort of reserves first is cash reserve ratio and second is slr so if there is certain sort of deficiency in these reserves they can call in some of their loans from the money market they can ask for the call money they can ask for something for the interbank transactions the commercial banks prefer to recall their loans rather than borrow from the central banks at a higher rate of return so what commercial banks do they actually refer they actually want money from somebody else rather than from a central bank in order to avoid the rate because central bank will ask them to pay the rate of interest so they would rather go for an institute where they can get the amount at a lower rate of interest so next is helps in monetary policy so i told you that it helps in monetary policy because a money market is actually very important so let us try to understand with the help of a diagram so over here you have interest rate and over here you have quantity of money this is the demand curve so if there is more interest what will happen the demand for the money will be less if there is less interest the demand for the money will increase this quantity is not dependent on this interest rate is not dependent on your supply of money so these are two different things so you have one thing which is called as the supply of the money and this is inelastic because it is not dependent on your money now there could be a situation then when there is a lot of money in the market when there is a lot of money in the market what will happen this would be the equilibrium price so earlier what was the equilibrium price this was the interest rate which is i1 now the supply of money has increased so this has reached to i2 so supply has increased the interest rate has fallen now there could be another situation when the supply of money decreases when supply of money decreases in the market what is happening it is i3 your interest rate has increase now what government does the government the rbi in order to control the monetary policy they actually control the supply of money so there are three options with the help of which the government controls the supply of money what are these three options so first is the reserve ratios the second is your uh, open market operations and your third is discount rate so these are the three operations with the help of which the rbi controls the monetary policy rbi controls the interest rate so let us first try to understand the reserve ratios i told you that reserve ratios are of two types slr and crr let us take an example the government has increased the crr and the slr rate earlier it was 10% and now it has been increased to 12% now what the banks are supposed to do they have to keep their extra money with the rbi now if in case they have to keep more money with the rbi what will happen eventually the supply of the money will decrease now we are on this line because the supply of money has decreased now the supply of money has decreased means interest rate has increased so we can say when the reserve ratio increases the interest rate increases now if this rate comes down to 8% now this rate is coming down to 8% now what is happening the supply of money has increased so we are on this line and when we are on this line what is happening the interest rate is decreasing so we can say that if reserve ratio decreases the interest rate decreases this is the first thing that we have to take care of now the second thing now let us try to understand the second thing the second thing that i told you is the open market operations open market operations means where the government where the rbi sells the securities or purchases the security of the commercial banks now rbi is purchasing or selling the securities of the commercial bank what is happening if the rbi purchases the securities now rbi is purchasing the security what is happening cash with the commercial banks 
cash with banks will increase now if the cash with banks will increase so this is my demand this is my supply and this is my interest and this is my quantity this is my i1 so now what is happening this supply is increasing now the supply has increased what has anchor happened the interest rate has fallen down so if the government will purchase anything the interest rate will come down on the contrary if the government sell anything what will happen the cash with bank reduces and the interest rate will increase so this is how the open market operations op works now the third category the third category that we have to see is the discount rate discount rate is the rate at which the commercial banks borrow from the rbi so this is the rate at which the commercial bank is borrowing from the rbi now what if the commercial bank if the discount rate increases what will happen the flow of the money with the commercial bank will reduce so keeping the same graph this was the supply this was the demand this was the quantity and this was your interest rate if the discount rate increases what will happen the supply of money will reduce and when the supply of money will reduce what will happen earlier this was your interest rate your interest rate will increase if the discount rate decreases what will happen there will be a rightward shift and when there will be a rightward shift what is happening your interest rate is decreasing so your interest rate has decreased now moving forward so it is through the money market that the central bank central bank in this case is the rbi is in a position to control the banking system with these three methods what are these three methods reserve ratios your open market operations and your discount rate so with the help of these three methods what the government is doing government is actually influencing your commerce and industry so moving on to the first point a well developed money market helps in the successful implementation of the monetary policies for the central bank so if your money market is working properly the central bank would be able to manage these things properly moving on to the next point helps in financial mobility mobility means the movement of funds so if you want to transfer the funds from one sector to another it can be easily done in the money market simple second thing mobility in the flow of funds is essential for the development of commerce and industry as an economy so for an economy it is really very important to transfer the funds if there is no mobility if there is no movement of capital from one place to another then there will be no credit creation no money will be transferred people won't be able to get the excess surplus which if anybody is in case of deficiency due to this it promotes liquidity and safety to financial assets so there is more liquidity in the economy because people can get the money whenever they are in need of it it does encourages savings and investment so when you know that we can get the funds easily you can borrow it and you can invest somewhere and actually it encourages your savings because you know i have money and i can save and i can give it to somebody else and can earn a interest on it moving forward equilibrium between demand and supply of funds so there will be an equilibrium between demand and supply of funds so whatever would be the supply of money and whatever would be the demand of money you can create the equilibrium if there is any discrepancy what you have to do you have to change the interest rate so with the same graph you have over here quantity and over here you have interest this is your demand for money and this is for supply of money and this is your interest rate now what is happening if suppose there is no equilibrium and the demand for money is more which is d1 what will happen you would eventually decrease the interest rate so in this case the interest rate should be this if you will decrease the interest rate you could reach to the equilibrium point so you can actually control the equilibrium between the demand and supply of funds with the help of the monetary market 
so the money market brings the equilibrium between the demand and supply of loanable funds whatever the funds are available in the market second the it does by allocating saving into investment channels so whatever savings you have you could easily invest those things because you have different different sources where you can invest your funds in this way it also helps in rational allocation of resources you could easily allocate the extra resources that you have now the last point the last point is the use of cash you can economically use the cash economically use the cash means whatever money you have so whenever we talk about the money you deal with the near money assets you don't have the actual money but you have something which is, can be converted into cash very easily so this is actually helps you to invest your cash properly you can buy gold you can buy stocks you can buy mutual funds you can buy some lic policy which is of less than a year what are you doing you are actually using the good you are actually putting the good use of your money whatever you have so it does provides a convenient and safe way of transferring funds from one place to another you don't have cash so you have electronic transactions that are taking place easily so you could easily transfer the funds that you have from one place to another suppose i am sitting in delhi and i want to transfer the funds to somebody who is in lucknow i can easily do that thereby immensely helping commerce and industry so commerce and industry could be benefited with the help of these so what have we studied in today's class we have studied the importance of money market wherein we have studied that the money market is really very important for an economy and we need to have a well developed money market so we cannot ignore the money market even if we have a proper regulation for the capital market we studied that the money market actually helps us in allocating the resources properly the surplus funds that we have and how do we how can we use those surplus funds by providing the funds to the people to the organizations who are in need of those funds second it helps in the monetary policies so government can actually make the laws government can actually see that what all monetary policies can be framed with the help of this so government controls the monetary policies with the help of three things first is rr which is reserve ratio and uh, second is uh, your open market operations and third is the discount rate so if the government feels that they have to increase the rate what would they do they would increase the supply of the money if the government feels that they have to decrease the rate what they would do they would decrease the supply of money this we have understood with the help of this diagram if this is my demand if this is my supply if i increase the supply what will happen my interest rate will fall if i'll decrease the supply my interest rate will increase so if the government can plan accordingly then we studied that it is really very important for us to know the liquidity it helps in increasing our liquidity and it helps in the mobility also so you can easily use your funds and it could be easily mobilized mobilized means it can be easily moved from one place to another without any disruption next thing that we studied was the equilibrium of demand and supply of funds so we studied that uh, this money market helps us in bringing the equilibrium between the de demand and supply of money that we have so there is no problem you could easily see that what how much money is available in the market and how much people are in, in need of money and accordingly you could bring the equilibrium and the last point that we have studied was the use of cash so in the economizing the use of cash we have studied that it is re, money market helps us in using the cash that we have in a proper manner so we can economically we can use it properly we can actually understand that where we have to invest this money do we have to invest this money in our funds do we have to invest this money in our mutual funds do we have to lend this money do we have to save this money so it helps us in understanding the these things so there is a well said quote that every coin has two sides one is the head and the other one is tail so everything has a advantages and the disadvantages advantages we have already discussed that what is the advantage of investing in the money market but there are few disadvantages that are also prevailing in the money market so if i want to invest in the money market i have to deal with these disadvantages 
So, in this slide we would be discussing about the disadvantages of the money market. So, the first disadvantage of the money market is minimums and fees. Now, what is minimums and fees? Minimums and fees actually mean the amount, the fee amount that I have to pay in order to invest. So, we have a term which is called as the DMAT account. Now, what is the, this DMAT account? This is the dematerialization account. Dematerialization account means whenever I want to invest my money, I want, I want to go through this account in order to invest the funds. Now, obviously, there would be certain transaction charges. Now, if there are certain transaction charges that are taking place, what will happen? If I have rupees 100 which I am investing on and the transaction charge is of say 8 percent and the interest that I, I am getting on this is only 6 percent. What is happening? I am paying more transaction charges and when I am paying more transaction charges ultimately I am not able to earn anything out of it. Similarly, if you want to invest something, so there are few funds wherein you have to invest, there is a barrier of minimums that you can only invest 1000 rupees, you need to invest 2000 rupees, you need to invest 5000 rupees. So, there are few funds wherein I cannot invest because there is a barrier of minimums and when there is a barrier of minimums and fees, it actually restricts an institution in order to invest because they cannot do anything. There is a barrier of the restriction, there is a barrier of a time period. So, these are the minimums and fees that we have to deal with. The second thing is the low interest rate. So, I told you that there is a graph which is called as the risk return trade off. Now, what is this risk and return trade off? Risk and return trade off means higher the risk, higher the return. Now, in the low, in the money market we studied that there is low risk. Low risk means there will be more liquidity there is uh, low security you have to deal with low risk and when you are dealing with low risk what is happening the returns are low if i want to earn higher returns then i have to go to the capital market now i have to step into the capital market in order to earn the higher returns so if i want low risk and the higher return there is no market for it so, that is the second disadvantage of the money market. So, I am getting very low interest rate. If I want to go with the higher returns, then I have to bear the higher risk. The third is the inflation risk. What is the inflation risk? Day by day, the inflation is increasing. We generally heard of news headlines that there is a lot of inflation in the market, uh, the goods have got expensive, there uh, we cannot buy anything. So, inflation is the when your purchasing power reduces. Purchasing power reduces means today I have 100 rupees and I can buy 2 pin or 50 rupees of some company. Maybe tomorrow if I have these 100 rupees I am not able to buy 2 pen. I can only buy 1 pen because the price of that pen has increased to 70 rupees. Now, what is happening? I have reduced my quantity, however, my income is constant. When this situation prevails, that is called as the inflationary situation. And when there is the inflationary situation in the market, what is happening? It is happening that you are not able to bear the risk. When you are not able to bear the risk, you have to consider this because you are only getting a lower return. You are getting the lower return and you are not able to buy 2 pence because of this lower return. So, there is a inflation risk. So, these are the few disadvantages of the money market despite the advantages that we have. So, this was all that we have studied in uh, today's class of importance of money market. Now, we in the next class, we would be focusing upon the constituents, the major uh, constituents of the money market which are the treasury bills, the commercial papers, certificate of deposits and what are the developments that are taking place in the money market to have a grasp of everything that if I want to buy a commercial paper, how we can deal with it, whether am I eligible to buy the commercial paper or not, who are the participants in it, the treasury bills of, uh, are of how many types and then what are the recent developments that the government is doing in order to develop the money market. So, this was all about today's class. Thank you.